Hello, and welcome to the Open Virtual Film Project. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Batch Rename tool. To open the tool, open the OVFP menu, either from the Virtual Production dropdown or the Toolbar button, and click the Batch Rename section. This tool works with both actors and assets. I'm going to start with actors to show you all the different functions available in this tool. And then I'm going to move on to assets to show you a case example of renaming assets from an Epic Marketplace pack to the OVFP naming convention standard. To start, I need a selection. So I'm going to select all of these chandelier objects in the content browser. I can also select objects out in the scene and click the get actors button. The first thing I might want to do to these names is replace this blueprint at the start. The first thing I might want to do to these names is remove this BP at the start. So I'm going to put the text to replace BP and I'm going to replace it with this new text field, which is empty since I'm deleting it. I can choose to affect the full name. So anywhere BP underscore shows up in the name will re be replaced with nothing or only the prefix, only the suffix or case sensitive versions of any of those three options. I'm going to choose only prefix, so I only get rid of this bp underscore at the start. As a sample, I'm going to add bp underscore to the end of this first word and click the replace text button. You'll see it replaced the first bp underscore but didn't replace the second one. If I had set the tool to full name, it would have replaced both of them. The next thing I might want to do is replace the word light with practical underscore. See it reflects in all of the objects down here and potentially add some text to the start. So if I do LX underscore practical underscore the name of the practical, I can add LX to the start by clicking this add to start button. Similarly, I could add something like cat to the end of all of my words. We're going to ignore the type prefix as these don't have a good type prefix. And we're going to add a number to the end. So if I wanted this chandelier small one, two, three, four, five, I could choose what number I start with. So in this case, I'm going to choose one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and click the add number to the end. It will add a zero padded number. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you hit 10, it will do 11, 12, 13. The reason it does a zero padded number is so that it keeps them in order. Other functions I have is the ability to revert all of the names. If I were to click this revert all button, it would revert the name to BP light chandelier small whatever it is already in the world outliner. I could clear the names, which would wipe out the name in the renaming section. When working with actors, I want to click the save all button and that will rename all of the objects in the world outliner to the name selected. Another function I have available to me is this two CB name, which is two content browser name. This only works if you have static meshes, skeletal meshes or decals selected. However, if I click the button, it will set the name to what the name in the content browser is. And then I could add a number to the end of them. As I'm working at any point, I can go in and edit any of the names in my content browser. As well as the ability to save a particular asset revert one instead of reverting all of them and the ability to remove particular assets from the list. An important note is until you click the save all or save each actor individually, the name is not updated in the world outliner. Moving on to assets, I'm going to show you the same functionality with an example of changing some asset names into the open virtual film project naming convention to access the OVP naming convention. I'm going to click the green wrench in the main menu, which opens up an explorer window of the OVFP plugin resources folder, inside of which there is a documentation folder and this OVFP naming convention document. And this document gives me information on how assets should be named to fit the OVFP naming convention. So back in the batch rename tool, I'm going to make a selection of assets in the content browser and now click the get assets button. And from here, I want to work on my different assets. Depending on the asset pack you're working from will depend on the exact steps you go through. I am using the classic mansion set from the Epic Marketplace, which has a strong naming convention. The first thing I want to do is get down to the base name of my asset. So to do that, I'm going to remove any of the superfluous prefixes. So this is SM underscore. 
I'm going to remove only the prefix, replace it with nothing. Same thing with T underscore. So I have the base names of a lot of my assets. If I look at this asset here by using the spyglass, you'll see it's got this T guns BC and it's a texture. If I pop into my OVFP naming convention guide, scroll to the textures section, they follow the format of TX package name, which we'll get to in a bit, because that's the same for textures and static meshes. Material name sometimes, we're going to call that guns. So this material is named guns. There is no free write necessary for this. And then a suffix code. If I stare at my suffix codes, this BC looks like a base color. So that one would become COL. This M is a mask texture. So it's going to become MSK. And this N is a normal texture. So it's going to become NRM. So if I quickly do that, BC only suffix becomes underscore COL. Underscore M becomes underscore MSK. And underscore N becomes underscore NRM. And then I have all of the textures at a similar stage to all of my static meshes. The next thing I need to do is both static meshes and textures have this package environment name. And decide on what that package or environment name is going to be. On a project, you might already have a list of source short names. If you don't, you can find a sample one in the OVFP resources documentation folder. And this is a document that gives you information on where an asset is from, the code that you're using inside of Unreal, which is this package environment name, license, any URL that you need to do, and any notes that you need to add. So if I was working on a full project, I would make a copy of this document and add a new section. This is an Epic Marketplace asset. So I'm going to call this Epic Marketplace Classic Mansion and give it an arbitrary short name, E-P-K-C-L-M-A-N. It has the UE Marketplace content license and I can copy the link to it on the Epic Marketplace and drop it in this URL here. This way, further along down the line, if anyone comes across this asset and needs to know where to go to get a higher resolution version or to ask permission to use it on a film, they have all the information that they need. So I'm going to take this EBK CL MAN back into my bulk rename tool. And if I stare at my naming convention, it's TX underscore package name underscore material name suffix code. Same thing with meshes, it's SM package name mesh name free rate. So either way, both of these need this EPK CL man at the start. So I'm going to add text to the start. And then I need to add a type prefix. If I search, the static mesh is SM and the texture is TX. I could manually go through and label each of these with a TX underscore or an SM underscore. However, there is this type prefix button. And if I click it, it automatically goes through and sets each of those to the correct type prefix. You'll notice that there is a little yellow triangle in the left hand corner that just disappeared. If I undo the type prefix on this static mesh and hover over this triangle here, you'll see it gives me a warning. The prefix does not appear to match its type. It should probably be SM. And it appears to not have enough underscores to fit the naming convention. These are quick hints to fix names for the OVFP name and convention. So as you're working, once you're happy with some of your names, you can click this rename the asset, which goes through and saves the name of the asset in the content browser. So now if I jump to it, it's TK EPCL MAN underscore guns, and then I could remove it from the list. I also have the functionality to reset it to its original name, but I'm not going to do that. In the type right hand corner, we again have the save all function. However, I'm not going to use that right now since the static mesh has an error with the name. Instead, I'm going to click this save only button, which is going to save everything that does not have a error triangle and then remove them from the list. So if I click save only, it saves those two textures, removes them from the list and gets me back to only the things that still have issues. So I'm going to add a type prefix, save only, and my list is done. Once I'm done renaming assets with the batch rename tool, 
I want to make sure I did not get any redirectors generated from the process. Redirector is a symbolic link saying, hey, if you were looking for this asset here, it has moved to here and can prevent you from doing things like deleting folders and lead to other issues. So we want to get rid of them. Step one to getting rid of redirectors is being able to see them. So in the content browser under filters, I'm going to show other filters, show redirectors. And then I'm going to start searching for redirector. So RED gets me redirectors. I've got one here and I can right click it and fix up. This will go through anywhere that references this redirector and say, hey, you need to edit yourself to look in this location now instead. And then it will delete the redirector so you no longer have those issues. If I wanted to do a bunch of redirectors all at the same time, I can right click the actual folder and fix up redirectors in folder. And then very important, after fixing redirectors, I want to hit save all and we are good to go. Now there's no more redirectors in this folder. That's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching.